In our final lesson on glucose metabolism from Chapter 13, we want to examine the pentose phosphate pathway. Here we have the net reaction for the pathway. We begin with glucose 6-phosphate and convert that to ribose 5-phosphate. That's one of our two major products of the pathway. In other words, we converted a 6-carbon sugar to a 5-carbon sugar. This is a pathway that operates in all cells and it is oxidative overall. All cells need to make DNA and RNA and ribose 5-phosphate, as we'll see in a later lesson, is the sugar base to make all the nucleotides we need to form those DNA and RNA molecules. Since the pathway is overall oxidative, we're we will generate reducing equivalents. In this case, we generate NADPH rather than NADH because the pathway is anabolic. One of our side products is CO2 as highlighted by the red circle. So overall the pathway is oxidative decarboxylation. Let's look at those individual steps. In step one we convert glucose 6-phosphate to a lactone it involves a transfer of a hydride ion to NADP plus to form the first of two molecules of NADPH. So it is an oxidation. You'll notice in this case the anomeric carbon has been oxidized to form that lactone ring and you can see the carbonyl group highlighted in red. This is an irreversible transfer and so we highlight that by the one-way arrow. In our second step, we need to open that ring to form the linear structure. However, since we've oxidized the ring and oxidized specifically the anomeric carbon, the ring cannot open on its own. And so we need the lactase, lactonase here to act as a hydrolase to open the ring and to form 6-phosphogluconate. The third step is our step of oxidative decarboxylation. We begin with 6-phosphogluconate and our product is ribulose 5-phosphate. The atoms that participate in the oxidation are highlighted in red so that we form a ketone group in that ribulose 5-phosphate product and that reduces NADP plus to our second molecule of NADPH. You'll notice also that we have decarboxylated and the leaving carboxyl group is highlighted in blue. We've learned in previous studies that carboxyl groups make excellent leaving groups. So now we understand why we needed first to oxidize that anomeric carbon to create this CO2 group that would make a good leaving group for this reaction. In this reaction we have successfully converted our 6-carbon compound to a 5-carbon compound. In our last step of this pathway, we need to convert ribulose 5-phosphate, a ketose, to ribose 5-phosphate, an aldose, and we'll use an isomerase to do that. We need to do this because in our final form, we need our sugar to be able to form a 5-membered ring, and a ketose with the anomeric carbon at carbon number 2 would not be able to do so and so we move that anomeric carbon from carbon number 2 to carbon number 1 and our product ribose 5-phosphate can now form that 5-membered ring that we need. The purpose of the pentose phosphate pathway is certainly to generate the ribose 5-phosphate and remember our second product is NADPH. The pathway activity is high in rapidly dividing cells because they need large amounts of DNA for the processes of replication. We can actually use one of the other products besides the ribose 5-phosphate. We can use the NADPH. It can be used to reduce the ribose 5-phosphate to deoxyribose 5-phosphate. And of course we need the deoxynucleotides to form DNA. So in other words, by this single pathway, we have the products we need to form all of our nucleotides, both for RNA and for DNA. However, some cells may need the NADPH generated by the pathway more than they need the ribose 5-phosphate. In other words, they need the reducing equivalents in the form of NADPH, but they don't need the sugar. 
We've learned in previous lessons, and we certainly know from Le Chatelier's principle, that if a product concentration builds up, it will shut down the pathway. So if we want to continue to generate NADPH, we need some way to use up the ribose 5-phosphate. And the cell does that by recycling the ribose 5-phosphate and building glycolytic intermediates. That's illustrated at the bottom of the slide. In this case, the C5 structures are intended to represent ribose 5-phosphate. So we can start with three molecules of ribose 5-phosphate and through a series of interconversions convert that to two molecules of fructose 6-phosphate and one of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. These sugars can then be degraded to pyruvate or used in gluconeogenesis. You'll notice that we have double arrows, so these are readily reversible reactions, so we can interconvert the sh these sugars. This allows us to continue to use the pentose phosphate pathway just for the reducing equivalents and then recycle the sugars. It's not important you know the individual steps of these interconversions, just that it is possible and what the final products are, fructose 6-phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. That concludes our lessons for Chapter 13. In our next video lesson, we'll start Chapter 14 with an overview of the TCA cycle, and we'll see how that differs from glycolysis.